Hi everyone, and welcome to this review note. This clip is the first in a series of six on subnetworking. This series presents a practical approach to subnetworking, which can be used in everyday network administration and also when preparing for certification exams. Subnetworking is the process of dividing what is typically a classful network into a larger number of smaller networks. This is something that's very common in the practice of IT administration. Normally, the network portion of an IP address is determined by its class. This example, we have a class A address, so the first octet, or the first eight bits, is what represents the network. When subnetting, we borrow some arbitrary number of the host bits and turn them into network bits instead. Those additional network bits are then used to create what we call subnets, and will give us a number of additional network addresses on our network. If at all possible, we try to choose a number of network bits that's evenly divisible by eight, in other words, on an octet boundary, as we can see in our example here. Under those circumstances, it makes it extremely easy to figure out what the network address is. In our case, everything in the first two octets, and that makes troubleshooting extremely easy. If it's impossible or undesirable to choose an even or number of network bits evenly divisible by eight, we don't have to, but that means we're going to subnet in the middle of an octet somewhere, and that is going to make figuring out what our network addresses are a little bit more challenging. We typically subnet for one or more of three different reasons. One could be security. For example, we've got a number of guest devices connected onto our Wi-Fi network. Those need access to the internet. But what we probably don't want to do is have these guests accessing our internal resources. So as a result of that, we can use subnets to isolate the traffic based on the role of the device on the network. Another reason we can subnet is to increase performance by blocking off broadcast traffic. In other words, creating more than one broadcast domain. For example, if we have broadcast traffic that's generated on this network over to the left, that will never propagate to the network on the right because the router is going to block that. Therefore, the switch over on the right-hand network over here is going to have less broadcast traffic that it will have to forward, and the devices on that network will not have to respond to the broadcast traffic. One other reason we might sub-network is so that we can delegate network administration to different teams and therefore reduce our administrative burden. For example, we have in this case several different uh, sites or possibly regions that are part of our network. And by using sub-networking, we can configure our network so that we've got a team that takes care of this network. They can configure whatever they need to from a network design perspective to meet their unique requirements. And then same thing in our other regions. There are a few different steps involved in sub-networking. The first one is to de determine what is the maximum number of networks required. And this is a, a design function. So we need to make sure that we satisfy the security, the performance, and the administrative requirements of our overall network. Second step, we have to determine how many of those host bits we're going to borrow and turn them into network bits so that we can create the required number of networks in the form of subnets, again, to meet those requirements. Once we have that done, we are going to figure out what our subnet mask and our CIDR value are. And then the final thing that we have to do is build our network map. What that means is that for each one of those subnets, we need to have the network address. We have to have the broadcast address, plus we have to have the range of valid host addresses that appear on each one of those networks. Follow-on videos are going to demonstrate how subnetting actually works, and we're going to look at examples of how we subnet the second, third, and fourth octets. We will also demonstrate how we can use this technique for troubleshooting on our networks. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.